I invited you because um, I read an article of yours that you'd written about imagination and Afrofuturism that I absolutely love. Now, it seems a little obscure, maybe. It's kind of a leap in a different direction. But can you, what is Afrofuturism and what's that got to do with imagination? For those of you who don't know what Afrofuturism is, you may possibly unknowingly uh, been engaging with it uh, for quite a while uh, already. Uh, it's an expression, uh, aesthetic and cultural philosophical expression uh, rooted essentially in black culture and an identity, a black diasporic culture, uh, where they are uh, imagining or rather reimagining uh, uh, the, the reality uh, framed in revisiting the past and rewriting the past in order to reshape uh, a future. So it started uh, uh, when it was a uh, coin in the 1990s uh, and essentially initially associated with um, uh, sci-fi, uh, but it found its expression through literature, through music, uh, through films. And, and those of you who've watched uh, Black Panther uh, or Notes and Crosses, uh, have been delving into Afrofuturism, which is uh, a vision of the world, not as it is, but as it could be or as it ought to be. To what degree is our imagination colonized? You know, I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of, of imagination being essentially a, a posture towards a, a desire to living in a transformed world. And there's something about uh, imagination being born from a place of frustration uh, and, and a place of dissatisfaction with status quo and a desire to see things being done or, or happen differently. And ultimately, a desire to, to tell different stories, uh, but even more so to live different stories, different versions of our stories. Uh, and uh, the language of decolonizing is sometimes uh, problematic for some, but I find it personally really helpful because when you think about col colonizing and colonization uh, 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 overall, it is about uh, abusive use of power. It is uh, about subjugating. It is about controlling, containing. It is about framing and, and holding back. Uh, while actually there's something about imagination that, is, that has at its heart liberation. Uh, whether it is about uh, you know connecting neighbors, uh, whether it is about entertaining children, uh, or whether it is about attending to uh, a lonely community, uh, all the efforts that we put into place are around stretching the boundaries, uh, stretching the boundaries of what we know, recognizing, I think, with humility that uh, there is more to know than what we know, uh, there is more to experience than what we that what we've experienced uh, and there's more to be than what we've been and, and so in, in that sense uh, imagination is, uh, is a remedy towards a colonized mind and, and a restricted mind. How, how do you help people reimagine the world? <laughs> Seems like that's your job isn't it? <laughs> it, it is my job in many ways and, and that, that's how I often like framing it. And I, I want to define myself as a storyteller, which I think connects me back to my own traditional roots, where storytelling is at the heart of the making of our communities uh, and the connecting of our communities through time and space. Uh, and so being uh, a storyteller as the essence of my vocation and my ministry is part of what I'm doing. And partly is recognizing that actually the, the story that I'm invited to tell is not one that I'm making up, is one that is rooted in, in God's own story. I to kind of theologize that uh, and, and a story that resonates, that echoes right from the dawn of creation, uh, where God brings into being uh, everything and calls it good and finds satisfaction in it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and recognizing that actually uh, one of the the impact of a, of a sinful world is, is a world where we, we fail uh, to, to live a life that is liberated, that is expansive, uh, that is connected and connecting, that is reconciled and reconciling, uh, but, but, but also recognizing that actually the way in which we are conditioned means that our, our brains become kind of uh, entering, generating, um, or, or inference generating 
uh, organs uh, and, and that our brains uh, kind of frame reality from the way in which they have been conditioned to operate and to think. And part of my task is to, to help people to recognize that actually there is an alternative reality, there's an alternative truth, yeah. which is not an escape from the, from the reality that we, we, we're living, but an, an aspiration to expand uh, uh, reality from what we've been accustomed to. The prophetic imagination by Walter Brueggemann that, that, that talks about all of that stuff. And um, I mean, I've got a quote from him here. He says, imagination is a danger, thus every totalitarian regime is frightened of the artist, we might say the creative or the imaginer. And it's the vocation of the prophet to keep alive the ministry of imagination, to keep on conjuring and proposing alternative futures to the single one the king wants to urge as the only thinkable one.